Hey everyone, I'm excited today to do something a little bit different. Welcome to my channel if you're new and if you're a returning subscriber, I'm always excited to have you here, but I'm gonna go book shopping. There's a lot of books that I wanna look at today, so come along with me and let's go check it out. They have the illustrated Harry Potter books. Oh my gosh, I have been wanting these for a while. We need to look at it for a second. Look how amazing these are. Look at Harry. Isn't that beautiful? Oh look, there's the flying car. Oh, there's Ron. It's the entire novel, but it's all illustrated. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful that is. I think I'm gonna have to start collecting these. I don't see the first one though, so I think you need to start with the first one. I am sitting on the floor in Barnes & Noble in the classics children's section because I wanted to look for Tom Sawyer. I think they have a Barnes & Noble collector's edition, so I wanna look for that first because I think it's a prettier cover. The reason I want it is because I love Tom Sawyer's Island in Disney World in Magic Kingdom, and I'd really like to visit there again after I have read the book. It's one of those classics that I know it's crazy that I haven't read. I really like a lot of classics, but it's like no matter how many you read, there's just always something that you haven't caught yet. I think I'm gonna really have to think about this. If there's any character in literature that I am the most like, it's definitely Anne. I love the mini series from the 1980s, the movie adaptations if you guys haven't seen it. And I also really like Anne with an E. I know a lot of people don't like that TV show because it changes it a lot, but I like seeing like a different take on things. But I really have to think about this one because even though I have Anne of Green Gables, it's beautiful. And alas, we found my favorite section young adult well other than classics i just read this one i absolutely loved it one of my favorite sarah Dessens so far so we just found this book enchante in a recommended reading list for fantasy the thing that intrigues me about it is that it is a historical fantasy so it's set during the french revolution and the main character she's not really a witch but her mother taught her magic and she can turn ordinary objects into money but then they transform back so she has to use that to try to infiltrate the french court at that time it sounds like a really interesting book and i love history and i love fantasy Talk about a beautiful book. Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales. It says all collectible editions, $15 each, regularly $25, Saturday and Sunday only. Oh, this is dangerous. The Star Wars entire trilogy. Of course, Princess Leia is on there, as she should be. You guys, Pride and Prejudice, my favorite book. How bad is it that I came here to look for new books and I'm just finding beautiful editions of books that I already own. Ah, oh, but it's only $10. I'm just, I'm mad that they put the sticker here. I'm hoping that that is easy to come off, but I kind of just want it just because it's pretty and it's like a faux leather um, cover, but they also have what I was looking for, Tom Sawyer. So I think I'm gonna have to get this edition because this is way prettier. If you guys are Gilmore Girls fans, I definitely recommend Lauren Graham's talking as fast as they can. It's very fun and funny and tells a lot about her life as an actress. My favorite actor of all time, Cary Grant. Has anyone read this biography? 
I really need to find a good one of him. Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher. It is beautiful and heartbreaking. It is literally her diaries and her reaction to some of her diaries from the time that she made the original Star Wars films. And it kind of delves into her relationship with Harrison Ford. And so it's kind of like interesting and heartbreaking. Oh man, this book. I miss Carrie Fisher so much. If you love Star Wars and love her, 1010 recommend. Are there any fellow Lord of the Rings fans or Hobbit fans out there? I really love Tolkien. I've been obsessed since uh, before I watched the movies. I read the books. My dad had me read The Hobbit when I was 12 or 13 and I fell in love with it. So since I'm already talking about books that I love, look at this set. That looks amazing. It's a little big though and with the colors being like black and red, I would love something that was just a little bit prettier or more neutral. They have this which I don't like I don't like huge books that are just everything all in one that's that's a huge book unless it's like maybe the complete works of Shakespeare but if you guys have any examples or suggestions for editions of Tolkien that are really pretty I would love to replace my paperback ones because they're kind of falling apart I've read them several times he's so cute like he's got his little coin here Nifflers love anything shiny Oh, it's Hedwig. She's such a pretty snowy owl. I have a little tiny one, but this one is so beautiful. I love her. He's so cute. And Buckbeak is so pretty and regal. Gryffindor bag is super cute. Luna Spectre Specs. I think I really need those for visiting the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I love this Luna Lovegood backpack. I love that it's from Loungefly. I love their Disney bags. It says exceptionally ordinary and it has her little Spectre specs. And I love that it's rainbow colored. This is so cute and it's pink, of course. One of my favorite comedies ever. Oh, I need this on Criterion. The Criterion collections are incredible. again it is Sunday and so I thought today would be a really perfect time to show you everything I got while I was at Barnes & Noble but before I do I would love to see anything that's going on your TBR list that you saw while we were there so pop that title down in the comments below so I can see what books interested you most and I do not usually buy this many books at once I like to go to the library a lot and I like to use their app you should definitely use it at your local library Library. If you're not already, they have audiobooks and ebooks. I also like just going to the physical library and checking out books. I also really love used bookstores, and that's a great way to find hidden gems. But when I want to look for something new or if I want to get some special editions, that's when I go to Barnes and Noble. I definitely splurged a little bit, but I'll show you everything. In case you're wondering, I did get the Harry Potter Spectre Specs, so I should say they're Luna Lovegood Spectre Specs. These are so cute. I cannot wait to wear these at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Let's take them out so you can see. Look how cute these are, they're amazing. And uh, they'll be perfect for looking for Nargles. They're gonna be so fun. The first book that I wanted to show you is called You'd Be Mine by Erin Hahn. It's a brand new YA book that just came out. I'm really excited about this one because I haven't heard anything about it. I think it's really fun to go book shopping at Barnes & Noble and look at all the brand new books. That's one of my favorite reasons to go there. See everything that's come out before anyone else has discovered it. Sometimes it's fun to be the first person to read something and love it and then pass it on to all of your friends and tell them how amazing it is. Uh, so I'm hoping this will be one of those books I never buy 
a book at the bookstore unless I have read the first chapter or unless I've checked it out and heard a lot of really good things about it before. But since I didn't know anything about this one, I did read the first chapter in the bookstore. I love the characters. I love the dialogue. It really just has like a sharp, edgy feel, but I think it's going to also be a cute romance. And it's about Annie Mathers, who was born into the country music scene. Uh, her parents were country music royalty, but five years ago, they passed away tragically. And so she has to decide if she wants to stay with her grandparents out of the public eye or follow her passion, which is to share the music she's written with the world. And then she meets Clay Coolidge, who is 18. It says Clay's a country music superstar, a heartthrob, and a mess. Clay's record label worries that its most affable bad boy who croons about ladies and liquor is becoming a liability. Industry execs are convinced that sweet, innocent Annie and her wholesome hills image could be Clay's salvation. Clay's more than happy to have Annie and her famous last name join him on the summer tour, especially once it becomes clear that their chemistry on stage is off the charts. But what will happen if Annie's star burns brighter than Clay's? Will fame and fortune and Annie's love be Clay's to lose? From what I could tell, I think this is going to be a happier read, but it looks like it'll be cute and sweet, but also have some depth. And I love that it's a summer story. I love summer stories that are road trips, and I need just one last summer story before we move into autumn. Next, I wanted a cute and happy read that I knew would be reliable by an author that I already love, which is Casey West. This is her brand new book, like just came out a few weeks ago. It's called Maybe This Time. My favorite of hers so far is called The Distance Between Us. Her books are absolutely perfect for people who love romantic comedies, Hallmark movies, Sarah Dessen. I don't think her stories are quite as, um, maybe as intense as Sarah Dessen's. I mean, Sarah Dessen's are still pretty happy and sweet. Um, these do usually have a coming of age element to them too, but they they definitely focus on sweet romances and I know we can't judge a book by its cover but how amazing is this cover I love the flower crown I love the bicycle I just want to jump into the aesthetic of this book and on the back it's got the guy and the girl. How cute is that? Walking down a road, she's got flowers in her hands. Weddings, funerals, and parties. Name the occasion and Sophie Evans will be there. Well, she has to be there. Sophie works for the local florist, so she's at every big event in her small hometown arranging bouquets and managing drama. Enter Andrew Hart, the son of a fancy new chef in town. Andrew is required to attend all the same events as Sophie, entitled arrogant Andrew. At least that's what Sophie sees. Everyone else seems enchanted by his supposed charm. And it goes on to talk about that they have to work together through a year of events and holidays. I read the first chapter of this one even though I knew I love her books and it does look really charming and fun. It starts out on Valentine's Day uh, when they're both working in an event together. So I can't wait to read this. I did end up buying several Barnes & Noble classic editions because they were just too beautiful to pass up. I had to buy my favorite book, Pride and Prejudice. I love everything about these editions. I love the green here on the pages, how it looks kind of antique. I love the swirling on the inside. I love that these books are really sturdy. They're perfect for favorite classics, so you can have an extra copy because the version that I do have of Pride and Prejudice is one that my mom bought for me at the Jane Austen Center in Bath. It's an Oxford World Classics edition, and it's paperback, so it's pretty worn at this point, and I don't want it to get so worn out that um, it falls completely apart. So this one will be perfect whenever I'm in the mood to visit the world of Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy, and and I love that it has these ribbon bookmarks. So you could just read a little bit of your favorite chapter and then put the ribbon in it and come back like a month or two later and read more about your favorite world. I did buy this edition of Tom Sawyer and I went ahead and got Huckleberry Finn. You can't read one without the other. I have already started reading Tom Sawyer and I think it's hilarious. Mark Twain is an author that I hadn't read before at this point, but I am sad that I haven't read him before now because he's just so funny. He has great satire, kind of like Jane Austen, but in a different sort of way. He actually did make fun of Jane Austen and say he didn't like her, but I read that that was just because he was kind of envious of her work or that he was being jokey, which I could see because he's very tongue in cheek. He makes fun of anything ridiculous. He has a very sharp wit. 
just like Jane Austen, so I could see how they have a similar style. I'm not sure, we may not ever know if he liked her writing or not. Each of these has a quote on the back, and this one says, Tom was a glittering hero once more. There were some that believed he would be president, yet if he escaped a hanging. So <laughs> that kind of tells you a little bit about his sense of humor. And Tom Sawyer is very mischievous. I'm really enjoying it. I can't wait to read Huckleberry Finn. Next, I had to get this Beauty and the Beast. It's so gorgeous. I love this picture look. It's Belle and Beast. It's got silver pages. The spine is beautiful. See, it says Beauty and the Beast and other classic fairy tales and then it has a castle on the back. This is my very favorite fairy tale of all time. I love the Disney movie. I was reading the introduction in the book and I thought it was really cool because it said that the very first version that was ever written down and published of Beauty and the Beast is the version that they used in here. And I've never read it before. I think I've read a version of it maybe in Grimm's Fairy Tales. I'm not sure if that's the same, but I'm excited. And like I said, let's be honest, this is just a beautiful book. I needed this in my collection, especially for the sale price. Another gorgeous book that I needed in my collection that I cannot wait to display because as you can see it matches the colors in my room with the blue and sort of the peachy rose gold color is Anne of Green Gables. I said I had to get this. <laughs> I was I was not lying. Anne is such an amazing character. I identify with her so much. Her imagination, her creativity. I read that the cover art for this edition was created by Anna Bond and I have to show you. Look inside there. Like you can see, Gilbert, it looks like Anne maybe. I can't see very well, but there's lots of different characters and props and settings from the story. And it has a quote on the back from the book. It says, looking forward to things is half the pleasure of them. And I am definitely looking forward to displaying this book and probably cracking it open with a reread of Anne of Green Gables. The only one I have is from when I was a child and it's a paperback edition that's pretty shabby and worn at this point. So I'm glad to have something that's nice and pristine. And last, I picked up this Barnes and Noble edition of Emily Dickinson's Selected Poems. I got really into Emily Dickinson this past winter even though I read some of her poetry earlier I got really excited when I got a selected edition of her poems at the library and I didn't have time to finish all of them before it was due and I had to take it back if you have not read Emily Dickinson I'm going to take just a second to read my favorite poem to you it is all about hope, which is something that I try to spread as much of as possible on my channel and on my Instagram. I love that her poetry is short and concise. It's got a lot of beautiful imagery that just really crackles in your mind. And writing teachers always say that fiction writers and nonfiction writers should read poetry as much as possible because, you know, it's maybe not going to help you with the characters or with the plot of a story, but it will help you with the imagery and your word choice. So. They always say that writers should read a poem a day. So this, I could get through a few of these. This is, this is quite a few poems. There's 109 pages here and her poems are very short. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chilliest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity, it asked a crumb of me. I love this poem so much because as you can see, it's like hope is a little bird that lives inside of all of us that sings within our hearts. And even though it may seem like all hope is lost sometimes, it is still there singing within our hearts and it never asks a crumb of us in return. It's just always there when we need it. If you made it to the end of this video and you enjoyed it and you would like to see more bookish vlogs from me, write the word books in the comments below. I'm really excited about making a few new things like this and I would like to sprinkle them in with my Disney vlogs. If you are new to this channel, I hope you'll decide to stick around and hang out if you came here for the books. You will definitely like a few of my Disney vlogs that involve Beauty and the Beast and Belle. And until next time, as always, I will see you again real soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!